Hello folks and welcome to today's um, Creative Thoughts. I mean today's Creative Thoughts, I'm going to be... I'm going to be discussing about um, inclusive uh, gaming and technology uh, since I don't have anything on uh, design to talk about. So inclusive gaming and technology um, I personally think it could be a whole lot better. Um, Because I don't think it is now. Just give me a second, that's rubbing against my. Just give me a second, folks, while I uh, sort the audio out. That's better. You can hear the less of the rubbing sound of the of the mic from the headphones. Um, so I'm going to talk about inclusive um, gaming and technology, something that um, I think we'd like to see as um, visually impaired or blind people. I'm sorry if this is not geared to our design, uh, but I'm at actual creative um, thoughts. Tomorrow's video is definitely creative on design. Uh, because, well, no, tomorrow's video is definitely Creative Thoughts. Uh, no, well, this is a Creative Thoughts, but tomorrow's uh, is a Magic Silver Room and Mind Mob uh, vlog, and I'll be discussing about marriage and divorce in business, uh, since that's what people want me to talk about. But um, this morning, um, we're just um, brain dumping about um, blindfold uh, inclusive technology. Um, and the way it's going. Now, I would like to see a blindfold games console. I would like to see one. Um, you know, and it's possible um, with all these uh, voice technology things that we've got now. I think that we could have. Um, we could see a games console. It's like a Sonos or a. Alexa device. I know there are um, stuff out there that um, do support these things. The amount of amazing games that are on the um, Echo is just amazing. You know, we've got. Um, let's see, we've got. Uh, uh, let's see, we've got um, Space Adventure, which is very addictive. We've got all the all really good ones. We've got um, a couple of the sonar interactive ones. But I think people like the feel of a joystick in the hand, which would be great to see. You know, uh, a, a games console with joysticks, but no screen, it's just audio. I would love to see it, you know? I'd love to see it happen. You know, a sound system with, um, you know, a, it could be doable. It could be doable um, with its own audio player functions. Um, you know, and it could be, I mean, it was doable in the early days. Uh, they used to have games cartridges with quizzes on. Um, they used to use the old 8 track cart players. But I don't want to see quizzes, I want to see real proper games with voice actors, you know. Um, Space adventures and all that kind of thing. I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't want to see space adventures. I want to see um, real, like proper, you know, games where you're shooting things. And, you know, um, a lot of little sort of stuff. Um, Because the audio is is really important, to, you know. You can sense certain things. If you've got two speakers handy, you can sense if something's coming from the left or the right or in the middle. Um, 
like the earlier racing games. You know? Um, if you could turn left in a car, it would pan to the left and turn right, pan to the right. You know, all that really good stuff. Um... And I think people would buy the games for it as well. I think people would buy, you know, all the great games that come for it, as long as they are great games. Um, you know, because we're sick of all the... I don't know, sick of all the titles that are out there. Uh, the Blindfold games, I... Well, I discuss on them. I touch on them so much, the Blindfold games. Um... They're, they're a great series of games, to be frankly fair. Um, they are a really good series of games. Um, but... My only problem with them is... They're not... They don't have that feel. So, I suggest you try a game called A Blind Legend. Which is a great game. Um, there's quite a few people that have covered it now. Um, it is, excuse me, it is a great game, but I think there is some, uh, there's some other games out there that are allowing voiceover to be used on them, and it's great to see that. Um, But I'd like to see proper games with like audio functions on, you know, as well. So I'd like to see the next, you know, the, you know, few war games with uh, audio description on, menus with audio description in, you know, because Mortal Kombat was. Um, I saw a guy play Mortal Kombat um, on YouTube, and he was saying the guy on Twitter said that he'd like to voice do all the voice commands through the whole game. Um, which, you know, I mean, Mortal Kombat has always been easy to navigate around the menus. And in fact, even the, um, even the contrast on the menus have been great through all the Mortal Kombat series. Um, Especially in the early Mortal Kombat. And in fact, I liked the level choosing screen that they used to have on the Nintendo version. I don't think anybody remembers it. The stage select screen. But to get to it, it was very iffy. But someone showed me how to get to it. Um, you have to... when you Before you pick your players, you've got a stage select. Uh, I can't remember before or after, but there is a stage select screen. Uh, but there's another way you can get to it, which is more easier. Um, and you get to that and you get to pick all the stages or you get to pick a certain stage. So I quite liked that. Um, you know, I mean, Capcom, all the Capcom games have been pretty accessible, you know, to menus and stuff. Um, because they want to buy, they want to get people buying their games. And I think if you want people to buy your product, you make it accessible for everybody. Um, I mean, you only need to look at Apple. Now uh, they've done a very good job. When they—that's how they used to sell their machines. If you went into an Apple store and you say I'm dyslexic, they would say, "Well, you know, our product does support for dyslexics." And in the olden days, they—they they did. That's how they sold their machines. Trust me. I went when I went to buy a Mac. I told them all the issues I was having with Jaws. They said. You know, why have Jaws? You've got voiceover. It does so much, and, and it did. Um, the only problem is, you have to learn with a Mac that there's more keyboard commands than a PC. A lot more. Loads more. And, and there's more mouse commands as well, but I think the thing is, like, Macs have been more quicker. You know, to sort of do the copy here, paste there, you know. Whereas with Windows, you can't necessarily do that, and that's what I liked with the Mac. But that's not the reason why I chose Mac. Why I chose Mac was because I was having issues with JAWS, I was having issues with 
Windows machines. Uh, my Windows machine died as well before I got my Mac, which was a... I won't say it was a godsend because it was a great machine, but I was having issues with that machine. Um, and I'll do another full-blown story on a different episode, but I was having issues with that machine, so... Um, yeah, I got my Apple Mac, and I always wanted a Mac, really. Um, and everybody in the family, apart from my stepdad and my real dad, have gone Mac. Even my sister's gone Mac. That doesn't mean to say that I'm a PC hater um, by any standards, because apparently Windows has become more accessible. There's NVDA out there. And in fact, not just NVDA, there's a bunch of free screen readers out there for Microsoft users which are far better than JAWS because you see JAWS has now had a bunch of issues um, JAWS and, and you know you still what you're paying 800 quid for a, a package you might as well just buy a Mac for 800 quid hey, I'm, you know 900 quid you've got everything you've got everything you could want within a Mac I say that to a lot of um, people, you know. Uh, I'm fine if you want a, a laptop for £250, um, then there's a bunch of free screen readers out there now. A bunch of them. Um, you know. Um, and JAWS is becoming very, very problematic. Um, I actually hate JAWS for Windows because um, it, it wants, it constantly wants updates, it freezes, um, it constantly fights with your computer all the time. Um, not like Supernova, but it does, if you don't update it in a certain time, it will stop working. Um, but even once you've updated it and stuff, if you haven't got certain parts for it, it will stop working. Certain scripts or whatever, if you haven't got that, it will stop working. Um, but I had several different problems, and I want to discuss that in a different episode, but... Um, why well, I got my Mac and... Yeah, I did find difficulty using it, but I really sat down with it one day and... I noticed a whole bunch of things, and my whole world opened up, and I thought, that's it, you know? I actually love the Mac over the over the PC, and um, I'm really really comfortable using it. I don't think I'd go back to using Windows now, um, you know. But I do still use Windows. Um, I don't use it, you know. I don't use it on a personal thing on a personal level, but um, I have it where I work or volunteer. Um, you know, but I wouldn't use Windows personally. Um, it's always an Apple all the way. Um, but I just think, um, you know, Apple, when you used to buy a Mac, it used to be, they used to sell it to you as, this is a machine. that, will. And in fact, that's how they used to sell the iPhone as well. That's how they used to sell the iPhone. They, they, well, they started um, in 2013, 2014. Hey, if you would... You know, if you wanted, you if you went into Apple and said, "I want a more accessible phone," they would say the iPhone is right for you, and and that's how they sold it. And um, so a lot of my friends brought, had iPhones. I was actually quite late to get an iPhone because um, all of my friends already had iPhones before me, but I got an iPhone. Uh, I mean the iPhones uh, it was the iPhone 4S wasn't it it was really compatible with that was it? no it was the um, it was the 3G it was the 3GS that was it it was a 3GS that sold and had it in voiceover then it was the 4S no the 4 then the 4S the 4S was the one that had Siri on it. It had to the 4S that had Siri on it. 
Um, um, now, I don't know, there's nothing selling the, the iPhone, you know, you know, facial recognition, I'm not really interested in. Um, that doesn't sell, that doesn't sell to at all. But anyway, um, you know, it was more accessible, they were making things more accessible. But, um, uh, getting back to games, because that's what this conversation is about. I like to sit a games console where it's, there's no screen, it's just a sound system. Um, and it uses sound, so when you use the joystick, it's, you know, and games have properly, you know, proper voice actors on. Um, it's doable. Um, we've seen it. We don't want too many choose your adventures. Have them, but it's not really what we want to see on the console. Um, um, a lot of people saying, oh, we want choose your own adventures because they're easy to play, but they don't really... Um, the problem with a choose your own adventure is there's got to be... If you're going to do a really good choose your own adventure or a good adventure game, it has to be addictive. It has to keep the player coming back more. Uh, there's a great game actually on the Amazon Echo called Space Adventure. And it's really addictive. <coughs> um, and you're always losing your fuel. Um, I'm going out at 12... I've got to pick Thomas up for 12 o'clock, Daddy. Um, no, this week they've got the party this week, so it's on at one o'clock. They've got the party this week, so it's on at one o'clock. The Valentine's thing. Shut it down. Um... I was really interested then. So yeah, um, yeah, that's what we want to see. Um, I'm not going to keep this going on for too long. Um, because this is kind of just a bit of thought dumping. But that's what I want to see, you know. I mean, we could have a cartridge-based system. Um, cartridge based, gosh, people would be. <laughs> cartridge based system. <laughs> Actually, do you know something though? VTech, um, saying that, um, you know how I go on bang on about uh, toys and kid system and VTech and all Um, I'd love to see VTech make a, um, I'd love to see VTech make another console. The V Smile was a great. Uh, and this doesn't get talked in a lot of retro gaming console uh, podcasts or anything, but the 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 V Smile, and I I'm gonna do a whole video on it. I've only got one game for it. I'm not gonna buy a bunch of games because there's videos covering that. I'm gonna cover the video as a console because um, the V Smile was a great console. It was a great cartridge-based console. And it was the last great thing before they brought out all these horrible learning lodge toys. I want to do a whole video on it. <laughs> I'll do a video just, I might just do two videos. One based on VTech and where they've been and gone on the whole toy line. And another on um, the V-Smile um, itself. But it was the last Thing, it was the last great thing we, f we saw before these horrible, horrible Learning Lodge um, toys. And they are horrible. Um, yeah, it's people like it because it's, I don't know, it's geeky, isn't it? It's like, oh, it can go on the internet. Wow. Um, you know, if you want a toy that goes on the internet, um, you should buy a Tiger Electronics toy. I'm saying. Um, you know, because you could hook them up to Wi-Fi, and plus, once you unhook them, it's not on Wi-Fi anymore, but, I don't know, um, 
but yeah. Um, but getting back to VTEC, I think uh, the problem with them now is these learning lodge toys. They're all, you know, there's issues with them. I mean, kids don't need to learn about hackers and virus trackers at an early age, do they? I didn't, strangely, I didn't know about viruses till I was about 10. <laughs> I didn't know about computer viruses till I was about 10. Um, and, well, I'd still then, I didn't know how, you know, what, you know, I didn't actually know about technology properly till I was about 15, 16, 17, 18. So, really, you know, it was kind of later on in those years. Um, but seriously, give your kid a games console. Um, they'll have just about as much fun as, the, you know. Um, I mean, because there's so many great games. I mean, seriously, if you want your kid to play games, get them a, a retro console. There's so many out there. But the, the learning lodge toys, they're not just horrible in the software problems and they're just so outdated but they're so ugly I mean seriously if you compare uh, a InnoTab to um, the likes of uh, an Android or an iPad <laughs> you'll see what I mean <laughs> and, and people have done reviews on these things have said how ugly they are um, they seriously you know um you know, but the V smile was one of the greatest things. It didn't look hideous and ugly. And um, I do love VTech, but there's just I just don't like the learning lodge line at all. I don't like it's just I don't know. It's like if you have a toy, you should be able to play with it and not have parents rein you in. But they have created a fantastic toy which is quite late um, it's a quite a decent toy um, I haven't, I've shown and told it but never put it out so I might do that um, but um, I want to rant on the, the the learning lodge toys at a different day because seriously um, it's just like it's like the parents have got to watch their kids while they play with the toys. I mean, you've, it's always been the case, you know. I mean, like, kids not playing toys in their mouths and all that business. But you can't just play with a toy, you know? Come on. What's. <laughs> I had. I'll tell you a funny story. I had um, a toy. Um, a toy phone. It was like a copy of a MacBook. And I was learning about phones when I had that. I was learning about what phones did, you know. So I was when I had the toy phone, I was emulating the menus, emulating the games. I was like, oh, it does ringtones. Oh, it does this, and then I pretended it could go on the internet. <laughs> and then phones did go on the internet, like five or six years after. Um, it spoils the novelty really now that we've got friendly phones do too much. Um, oh, give me back a Mac 310 and a day. Um, but yeah. I'd love to do my first accessible phone, but the problem is I'd have to get the SIM card to put in it. Um, but the first accessible phone, I've still got it. It's an emergency phone. I need to see if it will charge and stuff. Uh, my first accessible phone I ever had is the Nokia 6600 and boy that was a phone it's still a great phone it's still um, still holds up yeah it's got Talk 60 on it but it's a great phone um, it was one of those you could put in your, put in your pocket and And of course, it had snake on it. Um, which I kept losing. So. But, um, yeah. Um, 
I remember playing Snake on the original, the original, uh, the original Nokia phone. It's actually Snake Roy, wasn't it? It's, um... <laughs> My favourite game was Space Impact. Um, I loved how you could sneakily play games on your phone. You know, it was like if you were bored, sitting in the car or something, you could just. I remember when the doctor served you once, and I had the phone of Sonic that was so bored. And I was just playing Space Impact, annoying my mother. <laughs> so I had to silence it. You know. But, um, oh yeah, just playing Space Impact. And I loved how the games, all the games on the old Nokia phones, they got slower and they got faster and faster and faster. I loved that because it got harder. Um, and, uh, you know. um, but anyway, um, maybe that's something else you could have in a blind. Uh, console, maybe a telephone keypad, um, for some like games, you could have like a game like Snake, um, you know, that'd be great to see a blindfold version of that, would be kind of easy to do, um, you know, bring it back, bring back Snake, it's so addictive, oh, so addictive, I can't remember how many ridiculous hours I'd put into that game, you know, if I was bored. It was great because it would put off boredom for a whole long while. It'd be like, if you couldn't take a games console on the road, <coughs> um, it was great. Um, I remember there was one time when me and my dad, uh, my real dad, we were sat in the car one time, and um, we had like a. Well, you can't really play Snake two player. What we did was we took turns. So we pass the phone in between each other. So um, he did level one and I did level And he would always make me do the second level. I was like, Dad! Um, so he said, oh, is it getting too hard? He said, yeah, so he'd take the phone off me and finish the game for me. Because <laughs> I could never do the really hard I remember one time, um, I had my Nokia 3310, but he still had his Nokia 3310. And I grabbed it off the imbecile, and I was just ever playing Snake. I was like, I was like, don't beat me, score! I'm like, okay, so I came out of it pretty quickly, but I nearly lost on Snake, because he was really good at it, and I wasn't. <laughs> he could do the really hard bits, because it would get so fast that you couldn't be. Anyway, um, that's it, folks. Tomorrow, <clears throat> Tomorrow's vid, we're doing about business and marriage. Marriage in business, or ma um, business marriage. Um, how to stay, um, how to, um, you know, divorce in business. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it. Um, and my journey, personal journey. Um, and look at your future, look at your past. How can you look after your business and secure it? It's going to be a pretend and play office vlog, but I'm hoping something that people can enjoy. Because people ask me to do them, um, it might go a little bit serious and uh, it might go a little bit boring as well. But um, you know, and the stats and stuff, um, you know, and your management, where you need to go with your management and stuff. But it's kind of being loyal so it's it's kind of not falling out of people not spending money where you shouldn't um not um turning your back on people um and i had a great partner and he was a friend and we fell out for about half a year and I mean, he's gone and done his thing, and in fact, I might bring him in uh, to another video because um, it would be great. I think just for people who want a more kind of a—I don't know—I don't know if it's going to be entertainment because I'm going to do a bit of reading, to, a bit of reading. There are books on marriage in business and divorce in business and devotion. Because if you love what you do, you're going to be devoted to it. 
you know, to a point where it becomes religious. Okay? So, that's my... Um, that's my creative thoughts for today. Um, tomorrow's video will be... Um, and some great reading material. There's a book about um, marriage and divorce in business. And my mummy's read it. I don't know what it's called, but it's a great book. Um, it talks about... I don't know if she's still got it. Um, it talks about marriage and divorce through business. And how... When you divorce in business, it's like you turn your back on colleagues and uh, you, it's happened it's happened you know you turn your back on colleagues and uh, there's frustration frustration where it's not needed and sometimes when you're not loyal anymore that frustration is it becomes a thing to a point where you know you start blaming people um, you start you know you start falling out of people for no reason or there is a reason, but you, you don't want to explain it to them. You start turning your back on them, you know, which I did. I did. I did all that. I did. I did all of that. And communication gets lost. You don't want to communicate with your colleagues. Anyway, um, that's all for today. Um, and I've spoken about tomorrow's video is going to be all right. Um, also, um, I'm going to start up a new channel soon. Um, I keep saying that I'm going to start a new channel. This channel will be existent and I'll put some videos back on here and stuff like that. But um, there's going to be a new channel for Britain and Play Office and all that business. Um, so we can do some more serious type of videos. Um, because, I don't know, this, 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 uh, this channel hasn't been taken seriously over the years and stuff and the stats and the viewing and all that business and obviously <clears throat> um, even though I've done a lot of videos over uh, this topic or whatever there's a brand new series as well coming to the channel which is called um, Change a New Direction it's from the Driving Your Own Vision series um, sorry The Journey of Change um, it's the next few videos because we've done the driving your own vision series and we finished that and so the next one is is that series so um, obviously the driving your own vision series is a great series of videos I go out and have a look at that series um, this is creating thoughts vlog for today um, and don't forget to check out all the other great stuff that's on this channel. Thanks for watching. Um, I've got to do some bits and pieces now. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's vid where we'll be talking about marriage and divorce in the business. <laughs>